Adam Chris from MMANews.com being joined by Brandon, the mechanic Catino, once again, days ahead of his highly anticipated bout with Zach Kelly, a matchup that's been a long time in the making. It's finally on the cusp of taking place. It's going into fruition September 30th in Newark, Delaware, a gut check championship series. First, before we get into it, I got to thank my guest, Brandon. It's been a while since we talked. I, uh, I saw you in the ring a couple months ago. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm feeling good, man. Feeling, uh, feeling healthy, feel, feeling, feeling alive, and uh, yeah, just ready to rock and roll. Uh, come, uh, come uh, September 30th. That's it, man. Just a couple days away. It's been a few months since you tasted the uh, the thrill of victory at Gut Check against John the Bull Mosley. Can you uh, can you take us through that fight as we lead into your upcoming bout? As I understand, the winner of that belt was slated to get Zach cut, Zach Kelly. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like I mean, dude, really, really, man, like. I don't really know how to describe it, but like, man, I was so calm and cool that night. Like, I just remember even during the walkout, like, I'm just waiting for my music to hit. And I'm just like looking outside, you know, in, into the darkness, you know, just waiting, you know, till it's time for me to walk to the ring. And then when I just got in the ring, I was just calm and cool. And then, uh, you know, it just took me a minute to kind of kind of get to the flow. Cause like I said, I was slated to fight Zach Kelly, but, you know, he, he ended up getting hurt. So then, you know, then John Mosley stepped in and, you know, it's kind of, kind of, you're going from a guy who's 6'1 to a guy who's now, you know, five, five, eight, five, seven ish. So it kind of took me a minute to really kind of find my, you know, the height difference, you know, to, to kind of get back into him. But, but really kind of once the second round came through, you know, I, I found, I found my mark and then third round came and I, and I had to take care of business. Now you said you were calm, collected and walking out to the ring was uh, just, you know, just another breeze and walking in dead in the park. But uh, are you used to being that calm when you walk out to the ring? Uh, you know what, man? Like usually, I was something like, man, like once the music hit, like I, I do kind of feel like ready, ready to go. But I think it was just something, something was kind of different about that night. Because even like the whole night beforehand, like really just being there, waiting, you know, the whole night and everything like that. Like I just felt like it, like it just really seemed like it was just another day. I was gonna go train, you know, and and I, I was just, I, it was, it was just, it was just a blissful night. It's awesome. Getting back in the win column, how did you celebrate or was it getting back into camp for some of your, your fellow teammates? You know, how, how did that go as far as getting the W in and getting ready for the next one? Was there a celebration? How'd it go? Yeah, there was a little celebration. Uh, I think I, I think, Hey man, you know, hanging out in Delaware, not, you know, not, not many things stay, uh, stay open late at night. So like, I think we, I, I think we found the diner, you know, just had me a nice burger. That's usually, that's usually what I'm always craving after a fight is a nice burger. So I had that. And then, uh, and then I think uh, like that Sunday morning, I think I, I met up with my family for breakfast, had a nice celebration dinner with them. And then I think the following weekend I went down to Atlantic city uh, and I, and I had me a, 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 a nice steak dinner. And that, and that, and that was my celebration. Then after that, uh, it was kind of just, you know, helping out other other teammates, you know, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready for, for their fights, you know, like I said, because then the following month we had, uh, I had my teammate Craig, uh, Craig Alexander fighting. So, so I had to help him get ready as well. Yeah. Your opponent, Zach Kelly, he hasn't been active in competition for five years. His last bout was in 2018. And at that, he was predominantly participating in mixed martial arts. Now I knew he grew up in a kickboxing background, but my question is, does all of that knowledge I just threw on you. Does that mean anything as far as game planning goes? I'm obviously not asking for a game plan, but moreover, does it boost your confidence knowing that you've been more active, potentially thinking about ring rust, you know, whatever it may be, what, where's your head at? Yeah. So to be honest with you, man, like, so this is the third time me and Zach are scheduled to, to, to finally, you know, hook up. And I remember the first time we were scheduled, my mindset then is a little different than it is now. Cause I remember my first mindset was, man, like, dude, you've been retired. Like he basically was like, he was retired. And, and it was just one of those things was like, Oh, like you're, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to make a comeback fight and you want me to be your comeback fight. Like, you know, like, you know, how am I supposed to take that? But then, you know, when the fight didn't happen, he actually reached out to me and he told me his reasoning on why he just wanted to fight me you know, and, and everything like that. And, and I, and I took it cause it was one of the things was like, you know, he just wanted to test himself, you know, somebody of, of my, of my caliber, you know, being, being that, you know, I fought for glory and everything like that, you know, he just wanted to test himself. So I was like, all right, you know, you know, pre, you know, appreciate you reaching out and everything like that. And then, um, you know, and then, and then I think, you know, the second time we were supposed to go down, then I just thought to myself like, man, like, I think then I thought like me and him are kind of reversed because before, you know, when I fought Anthony Dill, I was one, 
you know, that was kind of coming, kind of coming off a long layoff and everything like that. So now it's like, well, I'm coming to spoil your party. You know, like you're, you're thinking like you're gonna have this triumphant return, and like now I'm gonna come spoil your party. Like I'm gonna be the hated guy because, in my head, I'm thinking like, you know, he kind of, he kind of has the stronger ties to maybe Delaware and everything like that. So you might have more people there, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come and be the bad guy, you know. But now, in this fight, my mindset is I'm the hero and the villain because I'm the hero in my story. I'm going to be the villain in his story. And I'm going to let them know. I'm going to let him know, hey, man, you know, this is your comeback right here, but it's not going to be a um, happy ending for you, you know? And then, plus, like, like I said, you know, man, 2018 was such a long time ago. You know, he could be a different fighter. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how he is. Zach Kelly in 2018 might be different than Zach Kelly in 2023. Because also, too, in 2018, he did have a, he did have a, he did have a pro kickboxing fight uh, for the USKA. He actually won their championship belt. I remember watching that fight. Cause I was like, man, I wish somebody would have told me I would have, I would have loved to step in when, when his opponent, when his original opponent, uh, had had uh, fell through. And I remember, like, that's when I think I said to myself, like, oh, I wanted, I wanted to fight him, uh, as a pro. But then I think that's when, uh, I, and then that's when I think uh, he had, he had hurt his bicep, and he, and and uh, and uh, he was out. So then that's when, you know, the the that's when I think I had brought up his name again, and I remember so much like, nah, he he's retired because of his bicep. And then all of a sudden, you know, I got the word that no, nah, he wants to fight you, and then. So now here we are today. I love it. I love it. Given this bout has been on both of you guys' radars for some time, I'm sure this camp isn't the first time. Obviously, it's not the first time you've thought about how you'd fight Zach. So, I mean, how excited are you to finally make the fight come to fruition? Yeah, like I, I am like, so my thing is like, man, I don't like when I first heard about Zach Kelly, let's say like this is coming from the amateur days. I remember like I fought a teammate of his. And I remember, like, the next show I went to, some – another fighter came up to me. Like, again, like, you know, I'm – like, this is hearsay from my mind. But, of course, like, I remember I'm younger. I'm kind of, like, more like, yo, man, you you want to you wanna fight? Let's fight. But, like, say it was somebody else had approached me and said, yo, Zach Kelly wants to fight you. Like, it wasn't Zach who came up and said, hey, man, you know, I want to step in the ring with you. It was somebody else who said, yo, Zach Kelly wants to fight you. And then that's when – I just brought it up to the promoter. I said, yo, I hear this guy wants to fight me. You know, let's make it happen. I don't care who it is. You know, I'm an amateur. I'm just trying to get fights in now. I want to get the experience. And then that's when I think, uh, like, it just it just never happened. So that's when, but I always kept my eye on him because, like, you know, we would be we'd be in the same circles. Like, I would, like, like when he would do MMA, I had teammates that would be on, like, the same card as him. So I would be like, oh, Zach Kelly's fighting. So I would still keep my eye on him and everything like that. And then that's when, like, again, in 2018, when, he had his pro kickboxing fight. I was like, all right, this guy's doing kickboxing again. I was like, all right, maybe, maybe we can still make this happen because for some reason, man, I don't know what it is, but as a pro kind of, kind of finding fights for myself locally was kind of a hard thing. So I was kind of finding anybody that was like in my weight class. If I saw you had a fight as a pro, I would, I would, I would like tell a promotion about you. And then like I said, but then like, you know, the injury and everything like that. So it just never happened. So, but again, like, I always thought about fighting Zach, and it's one of the things, too, where it's like usually in my weight class, guys are usually smaller than me, so he's somebody who's the same height as me, so I'm kind of eager, you know, for you know, you know, you know, know, for that, for that challenge as well. You just took me into my next question, man. I was going to say, I mean, you guys are both extremely, well, not extremely, but tall for your weight class, and getting into the bout itself, how do you see this bout going? Again, not asking for a game plan, but... With the with him not being as active, do you see it being more competitive, or do you see a clear path to victory? Uh, I do see I do see a, a clear a clear path to to victory. I mean, like I said, like as an amateur, I thought I could beat him. As a pro, I still think I can beat him. You know, um, again, like I said, he could be a different fighter, but still, like I, I know, like like I told you before in the last fight, it's like yo, when I'm cooking, I'm cooking, and like I just think. Like locally, like again, I think like if you're in New York, you're in New Jersey, you're in Pennsylvania, you're in Delaware, you're in Connecticut, you're in Maryland. There's nobody that is a better striker slash kickboxer in the U.S. than this guy right here. And I believe that. And I and that's why I just that's why I just I just have this this feeling for this fight. Love it. Pending a win in this bout, how do you feel about maybe a potential next opponent? If you defeat sack hypothetically, what, what do you want next for you, for Brandon Catino? What do you want? I mean, dude, it's, I'm always, I'm always a guy like I'm people always try to remember, but it's like, I'm a guy that can, I guess what's the word 
um, what's the word? Come part middle. I don't know. It was like I can I can focus on everything. Like I can still think ahead, but still think about what I'm doing right now. And so, really, I think of this fight as another opportunity for me to get into the big shows. And, you know, like, I've been still in talks with Robbie Timmers. I've been trying to get with K1. Like, originally, I wanted to fight Zach Kelly. I wanted to fight him at 160. But he was like, but this fight's going to be at 165. And the reason why I said yes to this fight at 165 is because the promotion K1, they have a 165-pound division. So I was like, you know what? Let's see how we do here. You know, get a belt here, and then maybe that'll help me get 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 into the big show. So this really, what I'm looking for is that I see Zach Kelly standing in my way. He's in my way of getting into a bigger, getting into the big leagues again, getting into glory, getting in the K1. And as like I said, he's standing in my way. And the way how I believe is like I said, I, I, I believe I am the best person here in the United States. Then I got to go out there and show it to him. Like I said, it's nothing personal. This is all business right here. This is business because he's standing in the way of business of me getting and helping defining my legacy in the kickboxing world. And that's 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 my mindset going going into this fight. And then anyway, after I get past Zach Kelly, and if for some reason I don't get to use my passport to go traveling over into the seas and we're staying here in the U.S., there's another guy there who already called out for me and Zach Kelly. And that's Javon Davis, who actually fought as an amateur. We tried to match up as pros as well. But again, something always came up where we weren't able to go. So if this fight goes the way how I think it's going to go, Javon Davis, he can get the smoke too. I can find him in gut check. And was it? I think they're, I think they have a show in February of 2023. So I'm in 2024. So me and him, we, 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 can, we can hook up then. So you have absolutely compartmentalized, like you said, you got, you got your plans right there. You got your plans in the forward moving, going in the future. I love it, man. So one final thing before we start closing it down, if you had to call your shot, your bold prediction for this fight, do you have one? I know it the last time it was bombs and drama. So what's your last response? What's your, what do you got this time? Man, you already know it, man. You see it on the shirt, baby. That's what I (laughs) think for this fight. Bombs and drama once again. Like I said, I'm trying to get into the big shows and the way how to get it is by spectacular fashion. And again, one of the uh, sponsors is giving out knockout of the night bonuses. Hey, I'm trying to get that extra money too. Remember, I am a prize fighter after all. So, hey, I can get a belt. I can get some extra money. and I can get a, I can get a call to the big leagues. And again, all I got to do is just go past is just go through, not to, but through Zach Kelly for it. Hey, man, like I said, it's nothing personal, just business. Hey, it's all business, and you can't help somebody chasing their paper, man. So how can fans keep up with the mechanic on social media for all fight news, new podcasts on your end? Drop it all on us for final words, all your sponsors, everything for your tune-up crew. Lay it down for us. All right, yeah, of course, guys. Remember, follow me on social media on Instagram or X slash Twitter. Uh, It's B Catino T-S-M-A. Uh, Facebook is Brandon the Mechanic Catino. That's my like page. Um, and then also, too, remember, you want to get my merch. That's at fightersfirst.shop. Uh, and uh, just want to thank my, thank my sponsors, which is Fighters First. They help me with all my shirts. Uh, thank you, uh, Foster's uh, Family Chiropractic, helping me uh, keep keep myself warm and my uh, I'm keep myself healthy. And also, to my uh, uh, massage therapist, Sherry. Got to show her love. She she got the magic hands. She always making making sure that I'm ready. I'm ready to go. All right, Brandon, that's going to do it for us. We're just a couple days away from his ring return to the ring again, oh, Zach. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, of course, I can't forget. Got to thank the team. Got to thank my teammates, Team Tiger Showmans, uh, my uh, Sunday uh, OG training crew as well, especially the, especially that group. And, of course, the uh, the uh, the tune-up crew for always, for always supporting me. I really appreciate it. And, of course, thank you as well for, for this interview. Of course, man. He's returning to the ring in just a couple of days against Zach Kelly at Gut Check Championship Series. It goes down on September 30th in Newark, Delaware. If you cannot grab tickets, make sure you try to grab your tickets. But if you can't, tune in live to Fight Club Live TV. That's fcltv.com for the live pay-per-view stream of Kelly vs. Catino. For Brandon Catino, I'm Adam Christ. Make sure you keep it locked to mymmanews.com for all your fight news needs. 